Welcome everyone, Costini here with a discussion about the dwarves in Total War Warhammer 3 and what I would personally do to fix them. They are certainly one of the worst races in the game. They're not quite as bad as, say, the Empire, but they certainly are in a pretty bad state as a race. And just going to cover what I would do in order to improve their situation, because I've covered their issues many times before. Well, first off, let's talk about casualty replenishment. Dwarves have one of the worst casualty replenishments in the game. It's not quite as bad as poor Nakari, who has a lot of units that have low armor. Many Dwarven units have good armor and good stats, so they'll do quite well in Autresolve. The problem is, the casualty replenishment is so low that you're probably going to be forced to fight a lot of battles manually that you would win, you'll take minimal losses, sieges, field battles, it doesn't matter. Like, an army like this can go up against many other armies, corner camping, doesn't matter, field battle. Unless you're a number like 2 free to one this kind of army is going to win a lot of battles with minimal casualties. That's fine, but the problem is even those minimal casualties might be difficult to, re to recover from. So, what would I do to fix the casualty replenishment? situation. Well, there is a skill in the blue skill line that actually fixes the problem, Inspirational Neater. So here's what I do with Inspirational Neater, and I'd say this in general, because it's not really worth taking for the most part, because it only goes up to 6%. So what I would do is triple the effect of Inspirational Neater and move it right here as opposed to Wall Breaker or Pure Beard, doesn't even matter what it is. You have very few reasons to actually go for the blue skill line if you're playing Dwarf, like you're much better off melee skill line, red skill line. This would give you a significant reason for getting the blue skill line as a Dwarf, and it would help fix a lot of things. By the way, the effect, Grumbrindle has a blue skill line that gives to action wide effects, so he gives inspirational leaders for his entire faction of 6%. So that's one of the things like I would do in order to help fix the dwarves. And yeah, also maybe keep Grumbrindle's effect or just double the effect of Grumbrindle's effect. The 6% is just way too low. There's a design philosophy that is a problem over here with Warhammer 3 as opposed to Warhammer 2. Because believe it or not, these kind of issues as someone who's replayed Warhammer 2 quite recently, uh, some of these issues were not quite as problematic in Warhammer 2. But there are reasons behind that, that I'll get to in a separate video. Now, that's the first thing. The second thing is that Dwarven campaigns really lack a huge amount of variety in them, because this is the best army you're going to get for the vast majority of your campaign. Like, it's turn 30, this campaign is effectively won. Like, that's the thing. Warhammer Freeze campaign pays for every Legend Lord on any difficulty. It's decided between the first... Um, 20 or 30 turns. That's when a campaign is decided. Like over here, I've dealt with Quake. Scarsink has been put on the back foot. Tretch has been put on the back foot. Sure, there's still issues. Scrag is marching on Karazakarak, though I think he's going to meet, uh, meet some problems over here. But regardless of that particular situation, um, a campaign generally gets decided in the early game. But the problem for the dwarves is that it's they have no reason to play with any kind of other units in their campaign absolutely at all it, the only w reason you would recruit unit any other units as opposed to quarrelers and grudge furs is because you can't if you don't have a barracks you recruit miners if you have a barracks at tier one you recruit dwarf warriors but that is the exception the rule is get a barracks to tier two as quickly as possible in every dwarven campaign and start spamming quarrelers and grudge throwers. That is the case in every single campaign, and there's never any reason to use any kind of variety. So dwarves end up having the worst variety of any campaign in terms of their army composition. Of the vast majority of races, like with a lot of other races, you have a reason to go for variety. For the dwarves, there's no reason, because you couple that poor casualty replenishment Combine that with the fact that range that let's say you have a hybrid army melee and range the melee units are going to take significantly more damage and auto resolve, um, and if you're using a melee army in general, a melee army will take more damage. Doesn't matter if it's warriors of chaos or not. But like warriors of chaos can get good enough for replenishment, not the best in the world, but good enough. And besides, warriors of chaos have much better melee units than the dwarves have access to early on. Well, not marauders, but warriors of chaos are better than dwarf warriors like it's saying a lot that you look at the campaign as the cast dwarfs and the cast dwarfs have such an amazing variety in their yes. campaigns like you get like early on sure you know you have all those variety of hobgoblins you can use and you do have reasons to use them like cutthroats archers 
um, wolf riders, just d the fact that you have those units and then you have reason to go for artillery, then you have reason to use all kinds of units. Sure, it might take a while in Kassdorf campaign and that's one of their problems that it can take a, a while for their campaigns as well. But like, Kassdorfs may lack a bit of variety early on, but the but once you start, once you open up with artillery shops, start getting artillery, you get artillery. Uh, you get uh, Taurus, you get Bull Centaurs, you get Kadai, you get a bunch of stuff. Dwarves never evolve past the Quarrel or Doomstack. You might change your artillery a bit, but you're, you rarely, if ever, have a reason to change your Quarrelers. The only thing you might want to add is Iron Drakes, a couple of them, but not really too many, like one or two, maybe three, four at most, but that's about it. Now, the reason behind this lack of variety, beyond just the fact that dwarves are lacking, severely lacking in units, is that, well, a lot of the units are now worthless. Slayers are worthless. Rangers, yeah, they're gimmicky. You can use them in fa with feigns, but still not, abs not worth it at all to get a lot of rangers. You do have reasons to get cannons. You do have reasons to get organ guns, but you have re very few reasons to get... Trollhammer torpedoes, iron breakers, yeah, kinda to some extent, but again, hammers, iron, all that, it's just gimmicky. Like the best army, quarrelers, dooms, quarreler, doom stacks. You might lack some of the melee capability, but the thing about quarrelers is they're decent enough melee. So what I would say is dwarves need more units and access to those units. This touches on, on the next issue, growth. Dwarves have one of the worst, no, the worst growth in the entire game. You know, some races have uh, double, triple, quadruple the dwarves. Dwarves go to 15 growth at the tier 5 capital. Uh, I'll just give you a context. Bretonia of all races can go to a growth of 80. <laughs> 80, yes, 80. You look at these races, you look, 30 just seems to be the reasonable amount at tier 3. And it can be a bit slow even for some of these races with 30, right? If you're want, wanting to go, uh, grow very quickly. But the reason dwarves lack variety is it's difficult to unlock stuff as them but there's more reasons than just the fact that oh you have really shitty growth from the settlement buildings which is a problem for them no it's not just that in a dwarven campaign because dwarves can use a commandment like empower the guild to give furry growth like mind you greenskins get have a commandment and a faction effect that increases their growth their growth as well so yeah the growth really needs to be improved in a dwarven campaign triple it quadruple it now i understand some people have this uh, romantic view of the dwarves being a passive action i'm gonna tell you if you play the dwarves in a passive way you're not playing them right like just just gonna point this out this is how you play a dwarf you achieve this in turn 30 of your campaign as Vorek, as Forgrim. If you're playing Belagar, yeah, you should be conquering a lot of the balance. That's how you play a Dwarven campaign. That's how you play any campaign. You play very aggressively. We can talk about philosophies of how to play the game, but let's just, let me just put it very clearly. The meta of the game right now is aggressive expansionist. Whether or not it should be doesn't matter. That's a different discussion, but that's the meta. The Dwarves do not handle that particular meta well. So they need better growth. Now, the, what's frustrating is that you can kind of get that better growth, but uh, you need to get a bunch of research, which takes dozens of turns, which is not particularly great in a campus. So yeah, you can get heavy corn stones for 10 growth faction wide. You can get high, uh, you can get autonomy of the hold, gold, uh, holds to empower the guild's commandment. Um, and also you can have decent enough control to also get your growth. But the problem is you're probably going to start a campaign with poor control. But once you get uh, high king authority, so you're looking at... Um, you're looking at getting various control, a uh, various level of control through technology. So you get one here, you get two here, um, you get another one here. So you're looking at four growth, then you can get three more. Um, so you're seven growth, which nullifies the difficulty, uh, public order difficulty modifier. By the way, if there's one thing I would remove is like that difficulty level of modifier of control because it's like utter garbage. It really hurts the doors more so than anything else, like because. It, it just makes it so that you're going to have poor growth. And then, because, um, like, you look at it, you look at uh, this. This might nullify, like, very poor control might nullify the growth you might get from two settlement buildings. Actually, even three settlement buildings, uh, dependent on their level. So you might be in a negative growth situation as the dwarves. That's how bad they are. No other race cares about this. Like, seriously, seriously. 
other races, if you're playing them, you're you care about like rebellions potentially, you care about the economic aspects. Dwarves have such miserable growth that the only reason they care about control is not because they're they'll face a rebellion. You rarely will face a rebellion, but because of the public order modifier combined with the poor inherent growth of dwarves, you might be in a negative growth situation. That is not good design. So that's one of the things that absolutely needs to be changed. Then uh, the forge system. The forge is a joke. Like the reason it's a joke is that the best, like it's not bad that gets the job done, but like here's the annoying thing. And it's like this is what's annoying about the dwarves. Like the best way to use the forge is like let's say you're crafting, let's say I craft four items, right? Now What's annoying about this is like you look at the gray items, they're 30, right? You look at the green items, they're 90. So, of course, it's better to just craft a bunch of gray items, then go over here, merge them together, get a bunch of green items. And if you don't get what you want, you just recycle stuff again and again and again. That is how you play dwarves. This system, like there's a lot of fluff here, a lot of the things that you can craft like, oh, this is a great item, and it's not. Um, there's a lot of things that are just like completely worthless and you're just abusing the system for your own benefits basically. The runes are, some of the runes are nice, but it's like the entire system is really tedious, especially if you're dealing with a lot of items. Like honestly, I play a lot of Dwarven campaigns where I just don't even fucking bother with this. Unless, unless I encounter an army and I'm like, okay, you know, time to get the armors of destiny on my heroes and my lords so I can obliterate everything. Mind you, the baseline dwarf army is so powerful enough that it doesn't matter, but still, sometimes you just want to do it. So yeah, this entire system and its interaction is just kind of really annoying uh, to tackle. Like, you just have to, let's say I want to craft a rune, then I have to assign it to a unit. It's just a lot of tedium, and it's not enjoyable to deal with the Oath Gold system. Uh, in a campaign. There's a lot of power because you can craft things like Armors of Destiny. Yes, absolutely, undeniably so. Like, if you're telling me you can't win a Dwarven campaign, I'm like, uh, you have the ability of spamming Armors of Destiny and good weapons and uh, Amulets of Preservation and Talisman of Preservation, so your heroes are unkillable and do a lot of damage. Your heroes and lords... Yeah, the, the problem with the Dwarves is not their ability to win a campaign. The problem is that it's so really fucking tedious to do so. And then, um, on top of that, we also have to talk about the grudge system. The grudge system is a joke. It's never been particularly great. One, it can be buggy. So let's say, for instance, you're playing Forgrim, right? One of the things that can happen in a Forgrim campaign, you can kill Skarsnik before you fight enough battles. Well, what happens if that occurs, right? And that's one of your starting grudges, one of your really powerful grudges. Well, what happens if... If Skarsnik gets wiped out before you complete your grudge, do you get the Master Runa Spite, which is a really powerful item? No, you fail the grudge. So yeah, that's annoying. On top of that, you constantly get grudges throughout the course of a campaign that are like, oh, someone raided your territory, so you better raid their entire race. Like, look at this. Raid Skaven, raid Greenskins. Uh, uh, raid Skaven, uh, Raid Greenskins. Oh, a uh, fight of win-free battles against a race. So what's really annoying about all of this is like when a particular when a particular uh, faction when a particular faction raids you, you don't get the grudge against that faction that might be wiped out if they get wiped out, right? So for instance, like Queek issued some grudges or some, the starring Greenskins raid in my territory. It's like I killed them. <laughs> that should be enough to wipe out the grudge and get the rewards. But no, it's like you get a Greenskin grudge. That's ridiculous. By the way, speaking about grudges, there should be a grudge in the in this entire book that's against greenskins as a whole. Like maybe we could have uh, like long-standing grudges against vampires, against greenskins, against Skaven, because dwarves do actually have them in the lore. I read that stuff. Uh, but may like and maybe you have various stages. So let's say you win enough battles against the vampires, you end up incre uh, you end up. Um, Increasing intent, uh, you end up getting some rewards. The more the more battles you win, the more territory you take against them, you, the more rewards you win. That's how the grudges should work. Like, let's say a faction pisses you off, you start getting a grudge against that, uh, that faction. Specifically, that gets wiped out if that faction gets destroyed. That's what I would do in regards to, to grudges. Beyond that, there is the issue of hero capacity. So, engineers require tier 4 structures to increase capacity, fanes require their own structure, and the holds of oath, which 
which you're only really getting for a sake of pain hero capacity. Yes, the Lord Recruiter rank is really nice, but tier 4 with poor growth. So that's actually a problem. Runesmiths can be acquired from tier 3 from their own structures, which is an annoyance as well, because yes, you do increase the local recruitment capacity for this, which is really important. There's a ki all kinds of issues like limited recruitment capacity until you get much higher level and you get a bunch of armories. Those kind of things do matter in the campaign. It's just all of these annoying things, having very limited heroes for, for the majority of a campaign, requiring individual structures, and then your economic model as well. You do have a control structure that produces trade resources. That's great. You have the trading depot, which increases tradable resources produced. That's great. But it just ends up being annoying. Like you combine a faction that has poor growth with needing numerous buildings for all kinds of things, like a building for a hero that you're only getting for a hero because you're never really going to bother with gyrocopters or gyrobombers. A building just for feign capacity and, and recruitment and not even a barracks. It's it's like the combination of things in a Dwarven campaign that creates issues. Some like, the Holes of Oath should not be its own separate building. That's my perspective on that. Rangers should not necessarily, or if there is a separate building for Fanes, maybe tie it to the Rangers, so you don't have to build a Ranger barracks for the sake of that. Engineers, you know, we can talk about that. Like, there's just so much uh, useless stuff here, and as I st stated, Warhammer 3 is about aggressive expansionism. Dwarves can do it. They have the army. But it's uh, with, gr uh, with uh, grudge throwers and with quarrelers. But it ends up being a pretty horrible gameplay for a race that should be significantly better. Now, fundamentally, the problem, of course, in Warhammer 3 is Creative Assembly's decision to have certain races, like the balancing, the problem is you have certain races that annihilate, that build a lot of hero capacity and annihilate their enemies and get great unit variety, hero variety, lord variety from very early on in their campaigns. Caven, Greenskins, Dark Elves do this. Then you have races like the Dwarves, which take dozens and dozens of turns to get to a point that other races start on. And that is one of the significant tension points in Warhammer 3, and it's really evident with the dwarves. But not just with the dwarves, there's other races that suffer from this as well. Questine signing out, don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and I'll see you next time.